Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Jaspreet Kaur and today we will study the module Meaning and Objectives of Research from the paper Social and Cultural Anthropology. The learning objectives of this module, the first is to know the meaning and characteristic of research, to know about the need for conducting research, to know how to choose correct objectives for research, and lastly to understand other related parameters of research. So first let us see what is research. Research itself is a very dynamic word with answers varying from one person to another, from layman to a scientist and even from one field to another. Say for example, some people may say that they do research before buying a certain electronic product just in order to make sure that they get the best deal. And similarly, a couple or a family may research different websites to get the cheapest rates for airfare or a holiday package. Similarly, a business analyst continuously keeps an eye on the share market and does research to invest his money in order to maximize his or her gains. And an undergraduate student sees research as collecting information from the internet for his weekly project assigned to them. Whereas for a graduate or a postgraduate student, research is simply collecting and compiling data, the task which is assigned to them by their professors. So thus we see that the scope of research is very vast and dynamic. However, None of the above examples can be considered as research unless they contribute to the existing scientific knowledge or literature. And it follows a predefined methodology which is scientific in nature. Now the scientific knowledge is the laws and theories that explain a certain phenomenon or behavior of interest using a scientific method. Based upon the scientific knowledge, we can divide research broadly into two types. The first is the inductive or theory building and the second is the deductive or theory testing. Where inductive research involves inferring the already established concepts and theories from the observed data. And whereas the deductive research involves testing these concepts and patterns using a new empirical data. It must always be kept in mind that for science to progress, both these forms of research are crucial. Research in the most common of meaning is the quest or search for knowledge. The Oxford Dictionary defines research as the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. Now these conclusions and facts form a database for the future research. So thus we see that research is not limited or it is not bound to any specific subject. Since acquirement of knowledge is a continuous process, so is the research. Its boundaries are very fluid, but the results are confined and scientifically proven. Research isn't limited to any specific subject. Technically, research comprises defining and redefining problems, formulating hypotheses or suggested solutions, collecting, organizing and evaluating data, making deductions and reaching conclusions, and finally, carefully testing these conclusions to determine whether they fit the formulating hypothesis. Now, two scientists, D. Lessinger and M. Stephenson, in the Encyclopedia of Social Sciences, define research as the manipulation of things, concept or symbols for the purpose of generalizing to extend correct or verify knowledge whether that knowledge aids in construction of theory or in the practice of an art. So thus we see that there are various definitions of research, but the aim of doing research remains unchanged across all the fields. Research on one hand finds solutions to the existing problems and on the other hand adds to the existing knowledge, giving a different perspective and insight. 
when we refer to a research study it encompasses a procedure a process that is within a set of approaches using techniques and methodology that is already tested for its validity and reliability and the outcome of process or research is always unbiased here philosophy is refer to the procedures applied for example qualitative or quantitative and reliability and validity refers to the accuracy of the procedure and the quality of the procedure that duplicates the result if the same procedure is followed over and over again and unbiased and objective means that the procedure is free from any personal bias on the part of the researcher it is also to be mentioned that the level of achievement of these criteria and the accuracy with which these are obtained may vary from one discipline to another however the complete absence of the above mentioned criteria does not qualify an activity to be labeled as research let us look into the various characteristics of research now we all know that any good research must address the question with the basic characteristic that designate the process as research now these steps must always be controlled rigorous systematic valid verifiable critical as well as empirical conducting a controlled study often is a challenge especially in anthropology where two factors affecting the relationship cannot be controlled as can be in a lab based study this is so because the factors in question are at times living human subjects or at times a research involves issue that are very sensitive to control as they are deeply related to human emotions further the process or the procedure may be rigorous that is the researcher must ensure that the procedure followed is relevant appropriate and justified there should not be a conflict or doubt with regards to the relevance of the research undertaken by the researcher it must be mentioned here that the degree of rigor may vary from one field to another and from one study topic to another say for example eating habits of a study group are highly relevant in study undertaken on metabolic disorders in physiological anthropology whereas it might not be that relevant in a study on fingerprints in forensic anthropology now the next characteristic is systematic which means that the study or the research process must follow a sequence that logically terminates into results the process has to be sequential follow a certain predecided logical pathway and not a haphazard one which not only would result in insignificant results but also result in waste of resources valid and verifiable are the next two important characteristics that any research process must possess it simply means that the conclusions or the findings obtained in one research are correct and can be duplicated when similar research is carried out by some other researcher empirical the results or conclusions drawn upon are based on data or evidence collected from the subjects criticality is another aspect of research which means that the procedures and the process used is full proof and thus stands critical review so thus a process of inquiry that has all the above characteristics can be called as a research now you must be wondering why do we need research it is apparent fact that human technology and ways to study humans is changing at a very fast pace to fulfill the ever changing demands research is required without which the existing scientific knowledge would become redundant we need research not only for the betterment of the contemporary human populations but also for a better future for the generations to come to cope with the ever increasing load on the natural resources we need advanced scientific ways which can help ease the burden and make human life more in sync with the nature 
thus human development is incomplete without research which is central to sustainable development research promotes scientific thinking conclusions based on empirical research and encourages rational thinking wading off the traditional skepticism it gives way to an unbiased outlook and logical reasoning without accepting the scientific way of thinking and rejecting the blind faith authoritarian attitude and subjective approach no subject will bloom the significance of research can be understood from the fact that it is central to policy formulation be it in any field like economics science or social science say for example in economics the government forms the budget based on analysis provided to them by the researchers on what are and what could be the needs and desires of the people it gives an array of options to the government and an opportunity to check the feasibility of each policy separately as well as combined Market and business research is another important area where research is required to understand the present trend in the market and to make policies for production, circulation and sales. It involves minimizing the production cost and maximizing the profits without compromising on the quality of the product. Now be it any product related to health or FMGs Research is important to fulfill the present and the future needs. In the absence of proper and deep understanding, effective marketing, appropriate pricing of the product, the health status of a population group can be affected. For example, a manufacturer of a condom without properly studying the needs and perceptions of the people can neither earn profits nor benefit the entire population as a whole. And finally research is also equally important in understanding the social problems and studying the social relationships research in social science not only adds to the knowledge but also makes this knowledge applicable to practical purposes objectives of research further there can be certain objectives with which one carries out a research and based on the objectives we can define the type of research as we know that the scientific discipline differ from each other in the object they study thus having created their own predefined set of unique laws and theories despite the variation in the object of study laws and principles what brings together these scientific communities is the fundamental question why The answer to this very curiosity is met by common objective and type of research as per the aim of the study. One can define broadly the following objectives of research which are research is often carried out to get a detailed familiarity and insight into any existing or new phenomenon. The data or results of the research are regarded as an addendum to what already exists if it is carried out in an already existing topic or area now such a kind of research is often called as exploratory research or formulative research when it describes the characteristics of an individual an event a situation or a group in terms of precise and reliable observations it is termed as descriptive and when a research studies the aims at establishing a relationship between two or more variables and between events it is termed as hypothesis testing research and lastly the kind of research that determines the frequency of occurrence of an event either independently or in association with another event it is known as diagnostic research so now let us look into what are the reasons to research what drives research or what attracts one towards research can range from purely personal objectives to the governmental needs however it is true that without motivation one cannot harvest successful results and outcomes which are the ultimate objectives of any research 
so what are the various motivations in research though it should be kept in mind that the reasons which will be listed are not exhaustive for some it may be to attain personal benefits in the form of a phd degree for others it is an unquenchable thirst for knowledge that they join research while some others want to serve the nation or society by contributing to its development by being a part of the research and development it is also a way for some to join teaching at higher levels and a few have an aptitude for research to uptake challenges and solve them besides these research is also done as it is the basis of the evidence based policy making a nation formulates its future policies based on the empirical data provided by the researcher which reflects the current situation of various fields ranging from health to economy from aviation to military illiteracy to a higher education etc so the list of reasons explained is not exhaustive and there could be motivations to do research which are beyond the purview of this module let us briefly also discuss the historical context the first directory of researchers was published in 1906 by james mckean cattle the editor of science magazine in united states which included the biographies of almost 4000 men who have carried out research work back then research was considered and seen to be dichotomous that is basic versus applied and it meant to be strictly referred to or perceived as university research now this differentiation was largely based on the intentions of the researchers which could either be seeking knowledge or applications rather than the methodology followed and for decades to come basic and applied would remain the only two categories of research that are discussed among researchers across the world the words like inquiry and investigation were gradually replaced by the word research which is an academic category before the world war 1 majority of the social science subjects focused on basic research in order to gain status as pure and scientific disciplines the world war 1 gave rise to need for applied and action oriented research and with the onset of the world war 2 in 1939 both the public and scientific communities strengthened their calls for research to participate in social and community action the concept of positivism was given by a french philosopher august comte who is also the founder of discipline of sociology in his concept he attempted to blend rationalism and empiricism in a new doctrine and suggested that theory and observations are inherently dependent on each other he further opined that theories are created via reasoning and the authenticity of these is verified only through observations one makes however in the early 20th century the concept of positivism was strongly criticized and was equated with quantitative research methods like the surveys and experiments without any philosophical commitments on the other hand anti positivism employed qualitative methods like interviews and participant observation anti positivism has been criticized on the grounds of not bringing about any change for the improvement of the societies but only in its plain understanding of the society now we come to the topic unit of analysis the first thing that a researcher must decide after what to study is who to study now the unit of analysis is thus the person or individual groups organizations technologies countries objects either singly or in combination that is the target of the underlying inquiry for example a researcher wants to study the shopping behavior response to some new product launched in the market or attitude towards the present policies then the unit of analysis is the individual 
On the other hand, if one is interested in knowing how teamwork affects the work output, then the unit of analysis is a group. If there is a study that seeks to answer the same research inquiry but in different cultures, then the unit of analysis would be country. It is not necessary that the unit of analysis had to be a human or a group of humans. It can be inanimate as well. So, what constitutes a good research? Despite the wide variety of research topics or the methodology adopted, a good research meets the bare minimum criteria to qualify as a good research. Now, the following are the criteria that qualifies any research as a good research. And what are these? The first is, a good research is often systematic and logical. The research process followed irrespective of the subject area should lie in a sequence and the steps followed should be planned well ahead and there should be a logical reasoning to not only the process but also the results. The result of a good research are replicable. That is, it means if the same methodology or procedure is followed in a different population, the results they should be verifiable and they should be same and lastly a good research is empirical and it follows a concrete data set so let us summarize what we have learned so far in this module research in the most common of meaning is the quest or search for knowledge the oxford dictionary defines research as the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. These new conclusions and facts form a database for the future research and research is not limited to or bound to any specific subject. Since acquirement of knowledge is a continuous process, so is the research. Its boundaries are fluid, but the results are confined and scientifically proven. And any good research must address the question with the basic characteristic that designate the process as research. These steps must be controlled, rigorous, systematic, valid, verifiable, critical, as well as empirical. To fulfill the ever-changing demand, research is required without which the existing scientific knowledge would become redundant. We need research not only for the betterment of the contemporary human population, but also for a better future for the generations to come. To cope with the ever-increasing load on the natural resources, we need advanced scientific ways which can help ease the burden and make human life more in sync with the nature. The first directory of research was published in 1906 by James McKean Cattle, the editor of Science Magazine in United States, which included the biographies of almost 4,000 men who carried research work. Back then, research was considered and seen to be dichotomous, that is, basic versus applied, and it meant to be strictly referred to or perceived as university research. The first thing that a researcher must decide after what to study is who to study. The unit of analysis is the person or the individual. It can be the groups, the organizations. It can be any technology or countries, objects. All these can be either studied either singly or in combination, which forms the target of the underlying inquiry. A good research is often systematic and logical, and the results of a good research are replicable over time, and the research is empirical and follows a concrete data set. Thank you.